So, having a good day, Andy? Having a fantastic day. Thanks yeah. very much for having me. No, no, no worries, no worries. Thanks for coming on. So, yeah, so we're here to talk about, I guess, you know, like, what's your role at Next and, like, what do you do in, in the world of merchandising, right? That's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm one of the merchandise managers on Women's Wear. Um, been at Next for about 24 years. Long time. Yeah, which is, you know, I started when I was seven. Um, obviously. I'll, I'll obviously. take no further questions at this time <laughs> on that. But yeah, came in as a trainee um, after working at store. Um, was lucky enough to get the opportunities to join the trainee program and just worked my way through from there, really. Um, started on menswear um, and then have been on women's wear ever since, really, for about the last 22 years. So, yeah, really good journey. Why and why merchandising? What's drawing you to that? Where'd that well, come from? Yeah, well, when I worked in store, I was particularly interested in the stock that was coming through the front door. And I'd be there for the deliveries coming in and you'd be there kind of organising it to make sure the stock was ready for the shop floor for when the door opened. And, I, you know, well, I've got loads of that and you've sent me tons of it. So, and you've already um, only sent me a little bit of some of the stock that I know I can sell out straight away. So I was probably a little bit annoying, actually, phoning, <laughs> phoning branch merchandise up all the time and asking them those questions. And they basically told me about the merchandise role. I didn't really know about it until then. And it just happened to align with the fact they were looking for people to do the trainee role. And um, along with a couple of other colleagues from um, store at the same time, we were given the opportunity to come in and, and, you know, apply to join the scheme. So it just all aligned, really. The fact that I was already interested in that side of thing, showing an interest in it and got the opportunity to be put forward for it. So, you know, really thankful to the, the store manager and the assistant store manager who kind of put my name forward at the time. Because who knows, I, you know, probably wouldn't be here if they hadn't put me forward for it. <laughs> Do you think they were just like, right, keeps ringing up, let's just get this guy in? Like, yeah, he's yeah. going to keep ringing until we give him a job. So <laughs> this is probably the easiest way to get rid of him. <laughs> and what was and what was that like going from um, store then coming to... What, what store was it, sorry? I worked in Preston 304. Okay. Any, anyone who works in store, they'll always say the store number after it. It's like <laughs> part, of the, part of the contract. Yeah, so I was at Preston 304... It just opened in my area, yeah. Because um, before that, I was working for an independent retailer, um, oh, which was what fantastic. Was that like? Yeah, it was great. It yeah. was like a, you really learned a lot of you know really good sales techniques, but it was a very small business. So it took to, to go you. somewhere um, with a bit more scale, a bit more scope for you know um, promotion. Um, made the call to move to Next. It just seemed like the perfect opportunity mm. with the new store opening, um, and just fell in love with the business there. Really, um, you just felt like the sky was the limit. If even, I worked hard. even at that stage when yeah. you just started you felt like there was a lot of scope and scale yeah yeah you could see the business only going one way um and it was just a different level to what i was used to it was you know so much more organized from going from an independent place that's you know a company like next that's an absolute juggernaut even in those days um and yeah just got a lot more structure mm. learned a lot more skills and like i say you then become much more aware of the the wider business sense of it which is why i became so interested in the merchandise and the stock flow um so yeah it's just one of those um, I guess coincidences were just really worked out mm. um, for me personally, and hopefully for the company. I guess it's I guess it's coincidence, but at the same time, it's like on your part, you've got to be you've got to kind of be looking for it and willing yeah. as well, haven't you? Like yeah. if you could have easily been not concerned about the stock coming in and just yeah. been taking it off, putting it out, yeah, and that's it. You'll find a lot of the times with, with any part of this business, it's the people who kind of ask those questions. Yeah. You know, are the ones who, who tend to do quite well. You know, if you are naturally curious and you want to know about, you know, it, you don't just accept the status quo. Mm. You challenge it and, you know, you ask questions, can you make it better? Yeah. Uh, and that, you see that in all parts of the business, but, you know, on product, you know, I'm always going to say we try and lead the way with that you know you, <laughs> even it comes down to, to things like you know fabric is the fabric for every garment that we do is as good as it possibly can be mm. the trims is as good as they possibly can be because the customer's just so demanding these days quite rightly it's, you know it's their money that they've got to part with mm. um so for us you know on the merchandise side we've just got to make sure we meet their expectations that the stock that they want you know the the right trend um you know amazing fabrics really great quality um that that's available for them the, the expectation is next day delivery. They want it next day. Yeah, convenience, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. it yeah. now. I yeah. think I think in most I think in most of society now, whether it is in retail or mm. anything, whatever you want, you want that convenience. Yeah. I, I was doing I was literally doing something earlier today, like yeah. booking a medical appointment, and I was mm. having a physio assessment with a chat bot, and I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's amazing. Like literally just asking me questions, which would have been like a 
like three or four phone calls. Now it's just yeah. like, let me do. But again, it's that convenience that I can do that in my time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It was like, you know, from yourself, from even shopping. Yeah. You know, any other retailer, if you have to wait three days for something, it's like, oh my God. Three days? This yeah. is ridiculous. I've changed that, my mind. You know, that, yeah, that would have been like industry leading, <laughs> yeah. you know, like 10 years ago. Yeah. And yeah. now if it's not next day, it's almost, yeah. you know, you, you know where really. Yeah. I agree um, with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely... And like I say, it's the customer's right to be that demanding. Mm. we just got to make sure that we're agile enough mm. that when the customer wants to buy that product that we're in stock, whether it be in the, st- in the stores or online. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that means we've got to deliver the trends uh, really down the chain as well, that it's not just in our very biggest stores that you can buy the, the trend. Um, yeah, I, I agree sure it's with delivered. that. Yeah. I agree with that because your, your representation of Next might be that, mm. you know... Uh, I know in Leicester where I live there's uh, the st- I don't know the store number of Firmston <laughs> but, <laughs> but I know the Firmston branch is smaller than say the Foss Park branch yeah. but again that might someone might not only go to that store so yeah sure why you know they need to make we need to be giving them the same level of inspiration and service yeah, as absolutely. we do in the other ones which is I, g- I can imagine it's quite a hard thing to do yeah I mean yeah. It, Naturally, one of the things we'll always look back on, um, you know, is what sold for us in the past. Yeah. But absolutely, we're finding that last year's bestseller is not necessarily going to be this year's bestseller. <laughs> so it's about delivering. <laughs> right. we, we've therefore got to, you know, the word we'll always use is, you know, are we being brave enough? Really? Are we pushing okay. that enough? Are we taking enough risks? You know, because this business, it's it's very easy to become quite stale. Mm. Um, and if, you, if you're showing even, for example, in a lot of the shops, if you're showing the customer a lot of the same thing, mm. Um, is there an opportunity to you know reduce that option count down a little bit to offer them something completely different? Because then you're capturing potentially a whole different customer, whether it be a different age group, different price point, um, completely different fabric. So it's just about making sure that we are you know we're agile enough as a business um, with how we're bringing that stock in to make sure that we are just really hitting their expectations, um, whether that be definitely availability. You know if, if it's not there they can't buy it, but also to make sure it meets their you know, demands when it comes to, to the quality, you know, to the style, colours, prints, you know, the latest trends. We're working on women's wear. Um, you know, those trends, they don't hang around for a, long, for a long time. You've got to make sure you hit them at the right time. Mm. Um, the big thing at the moment is animal print. Right. So we're just, you know, all guns blazing, getting that into the shop. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, my counterpart on the buying side, Becky and I were in Foss Park last night to make sure that, you know, that, um, that whole mob wife animal look was in there front and centre. They've done a great job with it. Um, because, like I say, you, if it's if it's not there when you absolutely are on trend, then you you know you're going to be stuck with that stock. Right, got it's, you. Everything's got a shelf life, so we've got to make sure that we're bold enough to buy it at exactly the right time. Mm. So it's quite a it's so the product's got quite a fast paced life cycle, and it's also the role itself quite fast paced as well. I'm working it next, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So obviously we're selecting now for you know back end of Christmas, you know around about got December you. time into January now. So you're looking quite far ahead, mm. but we're still trading um, today. Today, yeah, yeah. So you're always looking at three seasons at a time. What's <laughs> happening right now? What's happening next season? Potentially, maybe a, a, the start of the next season as well. Yeah. Um, so obviously, we've got a really talented design team mm. um, who are working on those trend forecasts. Um, so again, for us as a buying and merch team, uh, along with design and technology, um, to make sure we've got you know the perfect fabrics to deliver that. Uh, yeah. If we don't have those perfect fabrics, we've got to develop them. Um, and that's a lot of the time where we come up with our very, very best sellers, where we really start at a granular level right? Um, and build up from there. Okay. And how would, how would you describe merchandising? Because you've said loads of different elements there. Mm. How would you summarise what merchandising is in that kind of yeah, I mean, overall play? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the stock answer is having the right stock at the right place <laughs> at the right time, which is you hear from everyone you interview, they just bring it up on Google. Yeah. But really, in its nuts and bolts, that's just about delivering... Um, for the customer right you know the right stock what does that mean you know it, it, it's having you know the, the the right trends the right price points um stretching to their aspirations as well uh, having it at the right time like i say if you're trend you've got to make sure you hit it mm. at exactly the right time not too early not too late yeah um if you're too late they've already bought it and they don't want it from you anymore so we've got to make sure we're there um, and in the right quantity there's no point of us you know making sure we've got all this animal print in and it's beautiful. We deliver it into store, but it's gone in two days. Right. You know, okay. that, that's where that bravery part comes in. We might not have had that evidence that for maybe two years we've not sold an animal print, but, you know, it absolutely is the right thing to do now. So we've kind of got to really mm. push forward to that and make sure we're being brave 
um, to deliver that for the customer because that is what they're going to want, not what they bought last year. And is that is that bravery something that's kind of, uh, with you being a manager, is that something that you kind of go push out across the whole team as well, that everyone takes that kind of approach as well? It yeah, all, absolutely. It, yeah. yeah, we're going to make sure we're pulling in the same direction. Yeah. And to be honest, um, a lot of the younger people we've got working for us, they're really on board with it. Oh, great. They're, they're, they're from a different generation to me. So their, their, expectations <laughs> are, yeah, their expectations are very different. I did only say I was 27, didn't I? No, but <laughs> they, their expectations are very different. So they're really on board with that. They're oh, yeah. all over social media. Right. You know, you know, TikTok, things like that. They're all massive influences and they yeah. just weren't a thing. Yeah. You know, even like 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Um, so they're really at the forefront of it. Uh, and one thing we always ask all the trainees who come into the business is to really like you know, make your mark, make an impact. Right. You know, you're not here to just to kind of like shadow um, more senior people in the business. Um, obviously, you've got to learn your trade, mm. but you can absolutely have an impact in the on the range um, within your area. And has that always been there, even from when like you you came in as a trainee yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember taking my parents around. Actually, I was, I was back home visiting. I went back home to Bristol right. and took them into a next store. Um, and I was looking at the men's tailoring range and I was like, you had to drag them over to say, you see that, see the color of that check? <laughs> that was because of me. <laughs> and they were, like, they were like, cool. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it was that case that we had two fabrics on the wall and um, yeah, my team at the time were very keen on yeah, bringing us in mm. as well to making that decision. And you know, we made that decision to change the raker check to be a slightly different color. And for me, it was, it was a really proud moment. Yeah. You know, the, the customer probably didn't realize anything <laughs> to do with that. But at the same time, in the background, that was a decision that we made. Uh, you know, it was great that we were kind of empowered yeah. to do that at a young age. So it's, we've got to do that, but even more now. That must be, that must be re like you said, that must be really empowering. Like, especially if it's like one of your first career jobs or even your yeah. first job for some of the trainees. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Union stuff to then yeah. go into a, sh a shop at home or yeah. local and be like, yeah, I helped make that happen or yeah. that conversation I had with that person resulted in this. Like. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of the feedback we get from the trainees. I was talking to one of them actually before we came in. We we're having a launch meeting. Yeah. Asking, you know, how they're getting on as, along with them doing that meeting. And they, you know, they were saying, you know, I didn't realise I'd have this much responsibility. Oh, okay. Um, which they were saying in a very positive way. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. You know, which yeah. is good. They were, they were actually really happy that they've been trusted as much as they are. Mm. They were empowered to make decisions as much as they are. Um, and that's it because well, the reason we call them trainees is a trainee merchandiser role because we're training you to be a merchandiser it's not, not that yeah, yeah. The, tra yeah. the trainee role isn't a destination it's not a job no per se it's, yeah. it's the first rung on hopefully a very long ladder mm. to have a long career at next and am I right in thinking there's been like yourself there's quite a few people that have gone down that journey to like almost ma well manager role and maybe even beyond that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, one of my best friends is uh, Anthony G. Yeah, um, over on the home department. Oh, okay. He's looking after home brands. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we started at the same time. You know, actually, we worked in the same store together. <laughs> no uh, way. Yeah. No I way. Mean, in no terms way. of that journey, though, people starting as trainees. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much all of the managers actually have. have trod that path, which is why you can be really authentic when you're interviewing someone mm. about the career path that isn't a case of where next, um, particularly on the merchandise and buying role, tends to bring people in from outside in these mm. very senior positions. Not that there's a closed door on that, no, obviously. not at all. But, um, you know, a lot of us have, have trod that same path they have. So um, you can kind of talk to them really authentically about the journey you had, the journey they're having. Um, so, yeah, hopefully it adds a little bit of, um, you know, they, they can see their career path, they can yeah, see it going definitely. somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think I think that's really important as well, you know, to see. And there's so many of us here as well in all parts yeah, yeah. of the business, isn't there, that have done, that have progressed through different roles in yeah. product and in marketing and tech and everything. Yeah. That it's not just unique to product. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's unique to next though, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've listened to a lot of these podcasts before. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who have got, you know, 20 years plus on the board. Which is crazy, right? Yeah. It's you, crazy. Yeah, yeah. If you go to a company in London, you, you really struggle, I think, to, to find that. People tend to move around a lot more. Yeah. Whereas I think a lot of people here, you know, next kind of gets under your skin a little bit. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are like really dyed in the wall you know, yeah. next to room through. Yeah, look like, yeah. The, they basically help shape the brand and it's as much yeah. as next is part of their life, it's like, the yeah. same, it's the same the other way as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. I think it's really important. And on your, through your journey, you go from mm. trade, so it goes trainee, assistant, merchandise. Merchandiser, yeah. And then merchandise manager. Yes. What's kind of been the, at, at what point was the biggest shift for you and what did you, 
the, all your biggest challenge, do you reckon? Yeah, I think definitely the step up to manager. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because, um, yeah, I think every time you make that step up, yeah. the temptation is to stick at doing what you were doing. Right. So I was successful at that. Yeah. So I'll stick to doing that. When you're trainee, you step up to be assistant. There's a temptation to not let go of those of those roles, those got jobs you. that you were doing, but you've got to kind of you know, actually change because you've got a new trainee. Got you've you. got to manage that trainee. And the same going from assistant to a, a grade two, temptation is to stick to those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, so stepping up to manager is a case of now all those things that I felt, you know, got me to the party being, you know, very commercial, mm. um, hopefully forward thinking and, uh, <laughs> you know, and running departments really well. Yeah. Now a big part of that, I've actually got to let go of that now. Um, and I'm actually, it's my job now is to guide you know, the, the teams um, underneath us, really, who are they get to, their job to shape the range. Mm. It's my job to hopefully coach them and guide them mm. um, and make sure we end up with the best possible ranges that we can. Um, but me getting involved in, you know, really line-level detail, well, one, I'm sure they don't want me to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just back up. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, and, yeah, and two, that's not the best use of my time. No. You know, and, and also... Yeah, like I say, my role is now to coach them. Mm. And that's the thing you get a real kick out of. Yeah, so It's when, quite when you... a hard thing to learn, isn't it? Because like mm. you said, you yeah. you built your whole career up to that point yes. on the detail and learning this and that. And then all of a sudden, it's like you can't do that as much now because there's other yeah. people with... Well, you hope there's other people with the same or even better skill set than yeah, what yeah. you had. So yeah. like you say, well, in my case, I've definitely got better skills. So <laughs> I'm sure um, that's no, the case. Uh, no, absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah, like I say, it's part of your job then is to kind of back off, let mm. them do their job, and you're there to guide them and look after the real, like um, the top line information. Yeah. You know, are, are we spending too much? Are we spending too early? Mm. Um, how much money have we got invested into? You know, I keep going back to this animal print. You know, have we got enough of that overall? Yeah. You know, does that make sense across a floor rather than me looking at it as a merchandiser for my one department? Got you. What does that look like? Have we got, you know, the jeans that match back with the top that matches back with the jacket? Um, those are the sort of things rather than actually getting really, you know, um, stuck in the detail. Mm. No, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's a really, I find it a really interesting transition, especially for mm. those people that have gone through the different stages throughout their career. Yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's. I think it sometimes gets termed like imposter syndrome, doesn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I thought it was. I was thinking. I might be wrong, but yeah, it's kind of you get to that level and then you go, oh, hang on a minute, like, yeah, yeah. oh, can I be doing that now? Because I, just, yeah, I, I used to do all yeah. this. And it, in my case, yeah. I remember you know when I was lucky enough to get um, you know the opportunity to to do the role from from Liz, the, the product director at the time. Yeah. Um, I've been building up my entire career for that moment. Yeah. And then, then you get it and you go, Christ, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. here now. I'm I've got, here. To, I've got yeah. to make sure I've, you know, I've got to make sure yeah. I perform because, um, you know, Liz has given me that opportunity to do it. I can't let her down. Mm. I can't let the team underneath me down. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that imposter syndrome, I think it's, it's a lot more common than, than people would ever kind of let on. Yeah. Uh, I, I it agree. takes a while to work through it. I agree. I think yeah. it is really, I think it's really common, but I think then what I found is that you, what you then start looking for is because you're like, okay, so if I'm not doing that as much anymore, I can mm. go after these other new ideas. Yeah. It's almost like you have to kind of, I always describe Next as like a little bit like everyone's kind of got like a little bit of a startup mentality yeah, where absolutely. they're going for, yeah. we're going for, we don't forget about what we've done and we mm. don't go, right, mm. that's done, ignore it. We're always making that better, but then at the yeah. same time trying to improve and go after new stuff. Yeah, you've got to be entrepreneurial. Oh, absolutely. God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you think about it, it was only, a, you know, not a huge amount of time ago we weren't selling brands on the website. <laughs> no, no. And now, no. It's, now it's such a, you know, you know, an amazing part of the business that brings people to the to the website. Mm. You know, if you're, you're coming in for, I don't know, a certain brand of jacket or something, mm. you might stay in, you, maybe you weren't an ex-customer before. But, but now by proxy you are and you're yeah. looking at our ranges as well. Yeah. So it's, yeah, all of those ideas that come from generally quite small things from, yeah. from people in the business, they don't tend to come from the top down. It tends to generally come from, from the bottom up, which is, which is great really to see. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, there's so many, there's so many examples and so many things that people have talked about on here mm. as well, mm. where it's been a conversation or, or it's even been a, a question of, mm. Oh, why don't we do that? Or, What's the thinking behind that? And yeah. before you know it, a new process has changed or a new range yeah. is built or, you know, we're selling here now. And yeah, yeah and it, it's just, 
it's just incredible how it keeps kind of evolving almost. Yeah, and absolutely. I bet you've seen, you've seen that as well. Like you've had full oh, yeah. row seat, like to yeah, see how yeah. it's all evolved. So. Yeah, I remember when I started, it was just two, you know, very large printed directories and they became even larger. <laughs> then we added yeah. summer brochures. Then we had, you know, little pamphlets that would come out in between. Um, obviously, COVID came in and that kind of expedited the the move to digital only yep um so you see i mean even that was a massive transitional massive movement for us yeah because that directory was you know it was a staple it was like yeah if you, if you grew it up it was when, next wasn't yeah it? if you if you grew up um you know when i did certainly you know it's pretty much a, a lot of the houses you'd go in they had a next directory yeah. on the coffee table i remember yeah my mum having one and you know Coronation Street been on the background. She's flicking through, <laughs> looking at the pages there. So it's, yeah, it's quite an iconic thing. And it's, yeah. the, the fact that's evolved to a digital-only platform now, absolutely the right thing mm. to do. Um, yeah, just shows how agile the business is and, and how you can't just keep doing what you're doing just because it you know, we always have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that, the wrong mindset to have, isn't yeah, it? That, yeah, that book's only right at the time of the print. Yeah. Whereas the website, we can update, you know, like, 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 like we're talking to. about that, mm. the animal print trend. Yeah. Yeah. If that came after the book was done. Yeah. We've signed that off. You've got to wait for another couple of months before the, you know, your at home customer can buy it. Um, and then you're relying on people walking into your, into your shop sure. to do it. And as we know, people are, people are on the internet all the time, mm. you know, whether it's be on our app or on the mobile site or even just through, you know, a Google search. I want an animal. Yes. Gene you know, or an animal shirt or something like that. Yeah, uh, shopping behaviours change massively. Oh, completely. Yeah, massively. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it hard to, like, marry all of those up, whether it be, like, online shopping and, you know, in-store and, like, internationally and all of that, all yeah. the different, like, from a merchandising point of view, is that quite a difficult thing to do? Yeah, I mean, we've got an overall budget. You're right, okay. So we, we buy to that budget. Got you. Um, and roughly still about 60% of our sales on women's wear, for instance, still come from our, our retail stores. Oh, okay. Um, 40% online. But, you know, that, that's got a lot closer. Um, Over the years, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, you, that, it used yeah. to be, you know, upside down, really, towards, yeah. towards retail. Um, so, yeah, we, but we, we've got the ability to kind of move stock between each part of the business. Okay. Um, you know, retail stock can be sold to online customers, online stock something we can move to retail. And you do find sometimes there are um, behaviors that are different. You know, right. we, we might have a line that's absolutely flying online, but it's a bit slower in retail, so we just move that stock over to online. Oh, okay. That, that creates more space so we can put another line into retail, you know, and vice versa, really. Um, so, yeah, it, it, the fact that we've almost built a lot of the systems to mm. have that kind of ability to, to move where the business is taking us mm. um, is great. Again, really adaptable then. Like, oh, yeah, you've got to yeah. be so adaptable. And yeah. Are you, so as, as merchandisers and as a team, and I know you're probably not doing this because it's more in the devil in detail mm. now, but you then, mon like you say, you're monitoring that all the time then as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. every day. Every, every day. day. Yeah, every yeah, day, yeah. that's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll be looking at sales. Well, the top line sales, well, how much money did we get through the till? How yeah. many orders did we take? But then also, as a team, we'll be looking at our actual line level bestsellers. Got you. Because that, that, that's the best way. Our customer's telling us every day what they're like. Got you know, you. What are they moving to? And that might influence a decision. You know, we might have, um, I might have some fabric back somewhere, um, you know, ready to go. And it's a case of, you know, star print suddenly start moving really quickly. And it's a case, well, you know, well, let's dice that fabric up to be, um, you know, whether it be a star print or whether it be animal print, I'll mention it again. <laughs> you know, um, we, we get those, we're getting that live feed from the customer every day, you know, about what they like, what they don't like. Mm. Um, and whilst we're always number one, we've always got to move with the trend first. Um, there's still a lot of, um, you know, data within mm. that that we can react to. Um, and again, it just helps us learn and better service the customer going forward. It's almost like you, you part of the role as well is that data science, data Absolutely, analytical yeah. Yeah, aspect. Yeah. You know that's in. You know that's in. I mean, I mean, I think that's just another role and um, mm. skill set that's boomed over the years as Absolutely. well. Like, yeah, it never you with the growth of online. It mm. never used to be as prominent. But I know now in most teams there's data teams. Yeah. Data, but it feels like merchandising is always been that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely so if you think the amount of options that we're offering how many is that option an I'd option say, you mean like a, a garment don't yeah, you? In yeah, yeah individual style Styled. so let's yeah. say we've got three thousand <laughs> quite um, a lot <laughs> yeah uh, styles on the website for women's wear at any one time really yeah um so if you think to actually sift through all of that to actually pick out some information that's actually you know really um, interesting information maybe something we didn't buy a lot of maybe we only bought right. five pieces of a certain shape 
that it's moved really quickly. The important thing for us is to understand that. Well, what is it about that that the customer really liked? Is it something we just need to repeat on? Or is it something we just need to learn on for the future to make sure that the next trend shape like that, that we buy more of it? The 500 right. pieces wasn't enough. So it's, it's, there's lots of different metrics you can look at. Purely how many you've sold. Yeah. But if you're only ever looking at how much you've sold, obviously the things that you bought a lot of are always mm. going to be at the top of that list. How do you determine what variable it will be? Because like you said, that's really interesting that it could be, right, this is hot now. Yes. Or it could be, oh, people are just building up to it. How do you know... How yeah. do you get that feedback? Because that's not the data's not going to tell you that. No, is it? That, no, that's what we've got. To, that's that's where that bravery part comes okay. in. Yeah, oh, so okay. Yeah. So the design team, you know, we, we've got an amazing design team, really. Mm. Um, so we're we're launching either new design themes, or it will just be influences from films, from music, concerts, um, social media. Yeah. Um, all of that information gets pulled in um, to make sure that that we've got a presence of that. And right. the, the real talent, though, is understanding which of those are going to be really big, right. which, of, which of those we need to have, yeah. but, but they're more niche. So those are the things we might buy 500, 600 pieces of. What are the things that are going to be absolutely massive mm. that are, you know, we've got to make sure we've got a presence in all of our shops and we've got a presence, a really big presence of it online and we're really promoting it online. Uh, and that's, that's where that, that marrying up the design mm. buying and merchandise, all three years I've got to be singing on the, off the same hymn sheet. The yeah, the designer really pushing it, and the merchandiser goes, nah, that's, "I'm not buying it." You know, <laughs> it's going to fall out of bed, isn't it? And, right. And, you know, conversely, if the designer doesn't really believe in it, and we think, "No, well, I'm going to buy forty thousand of that." You know, we've all got to be on the same hymn sheet, and that's where um, we have the selection meetings almost yeah. monthly, um, and that's where we all kind of decide as a team. You know, what are we doing, what direction are we taking? But like I say, um, the risk of repeating myself, we start at like trend first, mm. but. Pro- Product's big on team, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, like all our product teams. Because you, like you said, you were training in men, train, training on menswear, menswear yeah. first, but yeah. then spent the rest of the time on women's wear. Yeah, yeah they're not going to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> and what? Because what, obviously, being like, is it is it funny being a man merchandising for? Not funny. Is it is it difficult or harder? Well, or I not. Do you know what? I've always found it easier. A lot, oh. of, people, a lot of people ask me that question. Really? You know, yeah. um, I always found it easy because I could almost detach myself from it. Got so you're I just can, like looking yeah, at the numbers. I can look at it purely, you know, whether it be you know about the numbers or about I can take that information from design. I don't really have a, a horse in the race when it comes to actually my personal preference. Got yeah. Um, obviously, I through time and experience, I've been able to kind of learn what mm. works, what doesn't. Um, but it means that I can go into it with much more of a blank slate. Got you. Um, so I'll be able to like take everyone's kind of advice and information on board, mm. look at the design purely based on the merits of the design, you know, look at the product purely on the merits of the product rather than thinking, oh, I'd really love to buy that. Yeah. So I guess there's a bit of a, a pro and a con to that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But yeah, I've, yeah, always, I've always found it actually works for me because, like I say, it's not a personal decision for me. No. And I think so, In I think in a team environment as mm. well, really valuable because if you're up because i I, i'm the same if if we're all saying the same thing and Mm. no one's asking different questions yeah i i get a bit i get a bit concerned i'm like oh hang on a minute yeah i mean sometimes it's just we're onto a winner here yeah yeah. you know great yeah but there should always be someone just going oh do you know what i'm actually thinking this yeah. Just as a, almost like yeah. a sense check, isn't it, as well? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the buying manager I work with now, Becky, yeah. you know, we've worked together for, I mean, that poor girl cannot get rid of me. I think it's knocking on the door, <laughs> of, about, it's knocking on the door of 20 so, years now. So we've kind of come through the business together. Brilliant. Yeah, and the amount of, I, I would call it healthy conflict yeah. we've had over the past. We've not always agreed with each other. Yeah. Um, but I always feel like we've come out with a better product on the back of it. Yeah, the result, the yeah. the winner is the product. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. 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 That every product that we've got in that range has been interrogated fully. Yeah, that it earns its place. It is as good as it possibly can be. Yeah, or as close to as good as it possibly can be. There's always room for improvement. I agree. Um, yeah. But yeah, on an outside looking in, you know, at times it might be like, oh, Becky and Andy don't really like each other. But <laughs> you know, from my point of view, at least, I think the world of her. No, no, it's, it, I, I agree. Healthy conflict is good yeah, because yeah. it's how. It's how better ideas are created yeah. or better products is created. Absolutely. If there's only one voice and it doesn't get interrogated at all, then, um, well, there's no point having the rest of you on the team, is there? No. If it only takes one person to make the decision, then you just need um, people who can just do the administration behind it, just lo- load the contracts. But, um, yeah, and that'd the fact, be boring as well. Oh, absolutely, that'd yeah. That'd be so boring. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Your design would miss us if we weren't here. I promise you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Desi- all the designers yeah. are like, no, 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 you guys can go and we'll yeah, just yeah, design yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. It might be a romantic idea. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. deep down, they're lovers. <laughs> <laughs> what's, been, what's been your most like, um, like, what's been your most memorable moment at next? Would you say, like, have you got one? You know, there's a, I've got quite a few actually. Yeah. I think back, uh, I was actually thinking, you know, on the drive here this morning, thinking about some of my favourite times in yeah. because you know, being invited to do this just yeah. made me naturally think about it. Yeah, yeah. But I remember once um, my first trip to Hong Kong. Uh, nice. Um, yeah, I think I was maybe about 26 or something. Oh, yeah. um, nice. And we were um, we were um, after having a really hard day. Yeah. You know, been at um, a lot of offices, a lot of factories. But I was looking out at Hong Kong Harbour, and I remember thinking. I can't believe I'm here. Really? Just, yeah, just that yeah. moment? Like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's times that like, the, the travelling side of it, I've always really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, yeah, to a point where the teams joke that I might end up on the um, DACA tourist board at one point <laughs> if, if merchandise <laughs> ever doesn't work out for me. But, you know, there's loads of controversy that I absolutely love. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you're building those relationships with your suppliers as well. Mm. Um, those moments really stick out for me. Yeah. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, another thing that really sticks out when I was working on the solo bottoms team um, just how much that department really took off um, right. on the back of some really good strategies that were put in place from, from the management at the time, from, you know, Becky and I's buying a merchandiser um, that really meant that department could really like take off through, you know, fabric backing. That meant that we were really putting our money where our mouth is, which meant Becky could negotiate a really amazing price based on really huge mm. volume. And that all tied up with a great, um, you, you know, the, the travel that we were doing. Mm you know, the product was bang on trend and that to see that all work out and you get the reward mm. for it, that the sales were absolutely phenomenal. Um, that was a special time, I think. Yeah. Felt like, did feel like you, that's where you really started to like get your teeth into it. And yeah. Like was, right, we're shaping this now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and with a lot of these things, like as you, as you get really into the, um, the nuts and bolts of it and, and how a garment is made, you're really scrutinizing the prices of things, you know, the, the quantities in which we're back in fabric in, where we're back in um, capacity with factories. So you've got, we've got all of that relationship to manage as well. But again, the fact that that all came in and it all worked out, um, everyone gained from it. The supplier was really happy. They got really good business. Becky and I were happy because the range was doing so well. You know, the, the ranges looked great. Um, so the stores were happy and um, yeah, hopefully the customers are happy as well. Yeah, because they're getting amazing product. That, that, yeah. And that is ultimately, if you, you know, if you really strip it all back, yeah. it, buying merchandise design, you know, why are we here? It's to deliver a really amazing product. Um, and that, if you keep that in mind with every decision that you make, you know, you're not going to go too far wrong. You're not going to get everything right. No. Um, yeah, sadly. Um, <laughs> but if you keep that in mind, you can hopefully you can get more yeah. right than you get wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just just special being on these teams, really. Nice. Well, I think that's a great place to end, Andy. I mean, thank Thanks you so much. No, no, thanks so much for coming on. And uh, you know, I always love finding out about new, well, roles at Next and people that have I'll gone through you, the business. You must be an expert now in terms of you know, even just for me <laughs> listening to the all the podcasts and everything. I've learned an awful lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's incredible actually how much information you yeah. still learn mm, even yeah. though you know like you've been 25 i've been in 14 years and yet people are saying stuff i'm like i had i had no yeah. inkling of that or i i sort of knew a bit but didn't really understand yeah, yeah. that it's yeah it, it's good it's like yeah you, i'm just like a sponge and i just keep yeah, taking yeah. it all well, in. it helps break down a lot of these you know invisible walls that that maybe you know can exist if you're not into that part of the business yeah. it's been great it's been getting like a half hour TED talk every week on uh, different areas of the business. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for coming on, Andy. It's no, great. Thank you for having me. No, cheers. Cheers.